we do that? <laughs> All right. So Hannah, um, director of production for Creatively Disruptive in charge of the team that um, drives business to our uh, small businesses and, and our gyms. Um, and she's going to take away branding and messaging um, on, on today's training. Here you go. Awesome. Yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so since we have a small group, um, if you have questions, like as we're talking, like please feel free to ask. Um, I'm also gonna send some links and whatnot through the chat. So I'll let you know when I do that, just based on some of the things that we're talking about. Can I just jump in real, yeah. I didn't introduce Ella. So everybody, Ella is there too. If you have any questions or anything, just put them in the chat box and Ella might be able to just answer any easy questions as, as we're going. Um, and she'll be, you know, communicating some stuff to you as well, but Ella's there to support you guys. Um, so just to get an idea on everybody that's here, are your gyms currently open where you're at? Um, are you still under a lot of restrictions? Or are you doing remote? What's kind of, what's the scenario with your current landscape? We so, are open. Uh, I'm Nicholas. Uh, this is my partner, Jen, uh, here at the gym. Our gym is Carolina Elite. Uh, okay. We teach uh, gymnastics, uh, but specialize in trampoline and tumbling gymnastics. We are currently open. Um, we have a few restrictions, uh, but it, it hasn't, it affected us a lot, you know, several months ago. It's, it's affected us less and less as time has gone on. So okay. we're, we're working full steam ahead. Okay. Uh, this is Vern and uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and we've been open. Uh, we've had to close twice uh, for a total of about two and a half months total. Okay. We just opened in February, <laughs> but have been doing this Interesting all time day. to open. <laughs> a brand new gym <laughs> opened up in February. To wow. deal with this. It's going great, though. Good. And then... Laura, I'm not sure if, or Lori. Laura and Lori, are you there? Um, so my gym closed on March 13th and then we were able to reopen again on June, at the beginning of June. Okay. And we've just been open with restrictions. We're not competing. We're just um, allowing kids to practice. Okay. Um, and I am in a gymnastics facility, but I run the cheer program. So I'm, I run more of like a cheer program than gymnastics. Okay. Um, and after we opened on June 26th, we only had to close for a week in October because we had an instructor with COVID and we just okay. wanted to make sure it wasn't amongst the kids before I reopened. Okay. And then Lori, are you guys open up right now? I'm sure she can hear us. Let me start. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we were open. Uh, no, our gym was open and then it closed completely in March yep. and then she sold it and now a business partner and I are trying to open up a whole new one completely separate from hers. Okay. But we're in a very strict county in California. Okay. So we've been closed the entire time. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like everybody except for you, Lori, are kind of open and just trying to ramp back up where you're maybe trying to get in a good position to kind of, when you are able to open up with the floodgates, essentially? Yes, we are starting from ground zero completely. Okay. <laughs> We're still okay. finding a location. We're still All securing equipment. Okay. I have the staff okay. ready to come back on, but new ownership, new management, the whole nine. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> um, okay, so that's good for me to get some background than kind of where everybody is. So this conversation, um, like Andy said, it's about brand and messaging and it's, there's a lot deeper we can go into each of these topics, but I think it gives us kind of a good universal starting place with a lot of things that we can think about based on where you're at in your gyms and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and if you're just, whether you're just starting out kind of like Lori or been around for a while and kind of reviewing um, how you've been operating, um, pulling out some of the nuggets where you can hopefully use that to elevate your messaging to grow your um, customer base, your membership base. So 
just um, like I said, if you have questions as we come through, um, please send them and um, through the chat and then um, Ella can respond or we can take a break to answer some specific questions. So uh, just to give kind of a nut, like an overview of what we're going to be talking about, we're going to dive into a little bit about who your customer is and just getting really getting us to think about who that person is and what matters to them. This is really valuable when we look at messaging on our website, messaging on our ads. Um, messaging in our flyers and our branding and making sure that we're speaking to that person the most effective way possible. Um, I'm actually going to show you some ad copy that we use for Facebook ads that works um, for all of our clients we've used for a long time. We've reinvented it and tested it and um, something that you can take a screen grab and steal it if you want, if you're doing your own ads um, or ask questions about. And then we're going to go through a little exercise um, to kind of figure out for yourselves, like what are the things that make you unique and how do you use that to um, in your messaging? And then there's a little bit of a checklist at the end. Um, and something I've actually just added in today that we're gonna talk a little bit about is something new and exciting that is unrolling, whether we like it or not. And that's the iOS 14 update, which some of you may or may not have heard about or may not know anything I'm talking about, but just talking a little bit about some of the things you can do today to help you prepare for that. Um, and if you don't know about it, just kind of give you some idea of what's going on with that. Okay, random messaging. So um, first thing I want to just briefly cover is the brand consistency. So when we bring on gyms or we work with gyms, one of the things we do at the beginning is, um, or any of the clients we work with is almost like a business audit. We look at their website, we look at their social accounts. Um, and just kind of look at overall, like what is the brand and who you are and what's um, in your community. And oftentimes we find a lot of inconsistencies with branding for especially um, gymnastics gyms. So thinking about this, it's looking at all the different ways that people can discover you and are those, those things in line and consistent, um, like colors, fonts, um, logos, um, pictures similar to for yourselves if you were to ever come across um, a piece of clothing with a swoosh on it you would automatically know it's Nike or if you went to the Nike website it's really clear who they are and what's part of them and if somebody tries to build a knockoff it's usually really easy to tell that it's not authentic um, so thinking about yourselves what are all the different ways that people could engage with you and do those things align um, one thing that we've helped some of our clients do and it's um, a valuable exercise is actually creating a brand guide and it doesn't have to be super complex. It literally could be one sheet that just says the fonts you use, the colors you use, um, uh, the logos you use, the sizing, and then you can always evolve from there. Maybe you have a really engaged audience on Instagram. So part of your brand guide can be your, your three core hashtags that you always use too. Like those could be things you could add to that. Um, especially if you are someone that doesn't or you want to not be the person that isn't responsible for all the branding for your business you want to hand that off to somebody else or delegate that to a front desk person having that reference can be really helpful to ensure that they're keeping that consistency um, and why we why that's important mostly is because anytime you see somebody sees an impression or sees something from you you want them to start drawing that connection with your business and not have to guess on who you are. Andy, I don't know if you've said this before, but like the idea that somebody has to see a brand like seven times or something before they like recognize it. Yep. If somebody says seven different ads from you, but they all look different. Are they able to draw those connections or are they re restarting that process? Yeah, um, the, the, they say <clears throat> seven is the beginning, 21 is when you've got them, right? So if they see- yeah see your brand in many different mediums 21 times, it's typically you become top of mind. Seven, yes. they start realizing um, yes. that something's here. Yeah. Um, branding, fonts, language. Uh, I talk about the brand guide. Another thing that you can use to help um, execute with more consistency and more um, is using a social media scheduler. So if you're active on social media, but one of the things that we see is sometimes people have um, a free day. So they post, but then they're busy for a week and then they don't post for that whole week. And then they have some times so and they post three days in a row and then they forget. So using a social media tool to help social media tool to help schedule out some of that 
messaging is really helpful to start building consistency with the people that do engage with you. And then keeping that brand guide kind of um, front and center with that messaging that goes out. Um, another big piece of this, and I'm going to talk more about this later, is um, website functionality. Uh, so this goes back to um, primarily like mobile responsiveness. Um, some things we see often is people have a website that they've had for 10 or 20 years and they just haven't touched it. And over time, it's become clunky and not responsive to mobile. Um, I think from the traffic we see over 80% of first touches through mobile experience. So if you're sending people um, that are searching for you on Google or through Facebook, they find you or anything like that. And you're sending them to a website that's not optimized for mobile. You're really hurting your, yourself with getting those people to take the next action. So if you don't have a mobile responsive site, um, uh, I would recommend looking into that. Um, it's pretty affordable to um, switch to that option in most cases. Um, that's something we do too. So if you have more questions on that, you can chat with Andy. Um, any questions on that so far? We feel pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, customer. So we go through an exercise um, with all of our clients where we look at audience personas and what's been really something we've done over the past I mean, almost four or five years now, Andy, is built out a really specific persona to the customers that work for kids activity centers. I would say that's probably one of our secret sauces when we talk about as an agency is we've been able to test and build and look at what works and what doesn't in that industry most period of time. And we've been able to build a really um, strong customer persona for that person. And so thinking about who that person is and what resonates with them. So we look at um, and thinking about who that person is, parents or guardians, who's the person that's going to be taking action with your business and speaking to them and where they're at. Um, sometimes we come across the gyms that are writing messaging that's very um, specific to a specific type of parent that's already in their community. So they're speaking to like parents who are have athletes that are very competitive in gymnastics and they're often maybe forgetting about the mom who has a two-year-old girl who's never heard of gymnastics or never been in a gymnastics program and how to make them feel like their program is accessible to them. Um, also talking about remembering and speaking to what matters to those customers or those potential uh, members. Um, Andy talks about this all the time. If you're in one of our Facebook groups, you've probably seen this and the messaging around the why. And this is probably, if, if anything from this conversation is one of the most important things that to take away from this is reflecting on, does your messaging translate the why and what matters to parents the most? Um, oftentimes we speak about the, the things that really don't matter at the end of the day, we talk about, oh, we have air conditioning or we got this brand new balance beam and that's cool. But at the end of the day, what matters to parents are, is my kid happy, healthy, making new friends and enjoying themselves? Um, Andy, I don't know if you want to speak more on the why, because I know that's something that you're really yeah. adamant on too. I mean, a why is kind of emotional and it's an yes. emotional deep driver. Um, yes. Typically people will um, justify making decisions and doing business with you based on facts, um, but they will do the business with you based on emotion and based on what's their driver. And so it's really important to be thinking about why the parent, why would a parent that doesn't really know much about gymnastics or dance or, or cheerleading actually you know, get their child involved, right? Um, and be speaking to that. Um, and oftentimes it's not, they want their child to, to be, to, to do it, to win trophies or to do whatever. Some, some parents do, but majority of parents want their kids to have positive socialization, want to meet new mm -hmm. friends, want to get stronger and, and be happier and be all they can be. So distilling your message down to their why um, is really, really important, especially if it, is congruent with your why. So your why and their why, if, if they match, that's a perfect match. And, and you'll be very, very attractive to those parents if you can match it. 
And I'm going to show you some ad copy in a minute that takes some of those things and puts it in a really short, clear way. Because um, oftentimes it's like, how do you consolidate of how a parent feels about what their kid wants into a one sentence statement. So I'm going to show you a little bit about some ways to do that. Um, one thing that we, especially with um, organic social media content is leveraging stories. So um, talking about all the amazing things that are happening in your gym or with your staff. So talking about how um, uh, Sarah, who's in the preschool program, she just learned how to do a cartwheel for the first time. And that might not feel like a big moment for you since you see gymnastics activity every day and maybe you're really focused on the high performance, for example. But to a mom who's looking for an opportunity for their young kid and they see that this little girl, her big smiling face because she's just on her first cartwheel, um, I know I can really resonate with that as a mom with young kids. And be making that emotional connection with your gym and wanting to be a part of that. Another thing, uh, and this kind of goes back to that brand consistency and thinking about who your customers are is um, people do their due diligence. Um, and I say, give them a good resume to look at. And your resume, especially now, even more is your digital presence. So if somebody goes to your website, somebody goes to your Facebook page, if somebody goes to your Google reviews, what do they see? And is there, are there any, is there anything that keeps them from taking the next action? Maybe you have one review on Google and it's not great. Well, that's all that person sees. Maybe you need to look at investing in getting more people to write reviews on Google. Maybe they go to your Facebook page and the last time you posted was three months ago. Are they still open? Are there still things going on? Like all the questions that parents ask, they go to your website and they can't access it on their phones. Like that's really frustrating. Are these people um, able to communicate with me effectively? So thinking about all the ways, the first touch points, and especially now, more than ever, digital is that experience. Um, uh, and so making sure that your digital presence is something that you're proud of and that people can easily um, navigate. Okay, so next couple of slides, I'm gonna break down um, some of the ways that we craft ads, some things that, and now this is stuff that, whether or not you're running Facebook ads or you're posting organic content, this is really good information that you can use in that strategy. So first one I'm gonna look at is imagery. Um, we call it creative. So picking creative. So this is, um, this specifically are some of the key things that our inter internal team looks at when we're picking out images for ads. Um, as a kind of reminder that we've been running ads for multiple years. We've been running ads for, I don't even know how many gyms we've done this for. And we've been able to test with thousands and thousands of dollars what works the best. And so I'm sharing some of that information with you. Um, the first thing that we always recommend is showcasing happy, smiling kids. We found that um, single child focus actually seems to work better than groups, especially right now with, um, depending on where you are, COVID, if you have really great photos of kids all hugging and touching each other because they're having a great time, may not be as, um, good to show that now, depending on where you are. So it's also better to focus on a single child there. Um, in this instance, you can see that the focus point is the child and the background's kind of blurred and we're not being distracted by garbage cans or something weird in the background. It's really clear who I should be looking at in the picture. This, um, with the one where it says limit text to 20%, so this is something actually now, um, if this is specific to Facebook ads, and actually now Facebook has actually lifted the 20% rule on text and imagery. So technically you can run ads with as much text as you want um, and you won't get um, dinged for it. However, we've still found that more image dominant content still seems to be performing better. So even though so this is one of those things that if you're starting to dabble in Facebook ads, for example, just because Facebook allows it doesn't mean it's the best thing for your business to achieve the results you want. So currently, even though the 20% rule is lifted, we still are seeing better results with ads that have less than 20% text. This is a square picture. Um, this is the ideal dimension for Facebook feed. Um, however, what we're looking at, especially now in the last year, is customizing the different placements um, as people engage differently. So 
Um, you may or may not know that Instagram is actually owned by Facebook. So when you run ads through Facebook, um, you actually have the opportunity to run ads through Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Then we're seeing more and more engagement happening through Instagram as parents are becoming um, younger parents or younger people are starting to become parents and those people spend more time on Instagram than Facebook. So you'll often see when it comes to age demographics, your older parents are probably spending a little bit more time on Facebook, whereas your younger parents are spending a little bit more time on Instagram. And so customizing um, the dimensions on Instagram when we look at stories versus Facebook. Um, that can be a little bit confusing. So if you're, if you're just getting into Facebook ads for the first time and you're running your first ad, I would say by default, start with a square dimension and that usually will work across all the placements. And as you become more comfortable, you can go in and customize them as you go. Use bold contrasting colors when possible. So in this image, we've used the text to really showcase the bold contrasting colors. Um, and this is just something to help draw people in. So um, what we call it is like a thumb stopper. So as people are scrolling through their phones, we want them to stop their scroll and look at what we've created. Um, and color is a really great way to capture people's attention. And then from there, they decide, do I wanna look at this further? Um, another thing that we've been really challenging ourselves and um, encouraging our customers to do is also being very mindful of diversity and inclusivity in your content. Um, and a lot of this too goes to gender, ethnicity, um, age range, and making sure that your imagery speaks to the, to the community that you want to bring in. Um, sometimes we'll see that all the images provided to us by a client are of their preschool program only. And then we don't have ages for the other programs we're trying to advertise. Um, or they're all girls or all boys and like looking at all the different ways and the different people and trying to represent that as best as possible in your ads so that, or in your content so that you're speaking to your audience um, and your whole audience that you're trying to attract. Andy, I don't know if there's anything you want to add about the creative process with ads or social media content. You're muted if you do. Um, not really. I think you covered it well, but it's you know just important to be eye catching. Um, yeah. You want people to stop when the when the scrolling through on their phone. Typically, you know, ninety percent of them are probably nowadays on their phone scrolling through. You want want it to be something that catches their eye. Um, you want it to thumb stop, and then you want the 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 message to then capture their their eye and then you know to go through the progression of going through the ad and then hopefully engaging so eye catching is important and it's getting more and more challenging to be eye catching because of our feeds but uh yeah you know typically a mom is going to kind of stop and see what something is if they see a happy smiling kid yeah awesome. i have a, a quick question if uh yeah if you have the time for it um yeah I try to do a lot on our social media and Facebook and, and you know, Instagram and they're connected in the suite and that's great. I, yep. uh, in talking about like this picture that you have right here um, and posting a lot of picture and diversity of pictures. Um, how, how do you see from, from you guys's bigger perspective, how do you guys see video uh, mm -hmm. more effective, less effective than a great picture? Um, yeah, I know that that may be coming up later, but you know, short videos, longer videos. That's a really great question. Um, yes, so to answer your question, video does fantastic on Facebook. I would say we do a, a mix of imagery versus video and it varies client to client with us, which one seems to resonate the most. Um, I know for from an e-commerce and our, our more product fo focused client, video dominates hands down, but with kids activity centers, it seems to vary depending on the client. Um, I would always recommend a mixture of both. Um, as far as the length of the content, I think it depends on who you're sending it to. So we often will use shorter, like under 30 second video content to a colder, we call it prospecting. So maybe people that don't know who you are, because the goal is to just engage them enough to um, take the next action. And we might use a longer video content for um, speaking to people who are already following us or interested in specific things. So parents that like your page, they're wanting to take a, get a 
deeper step into who you are and what you're about. So maybe they'll watch a two minute video of a bars routine or something versus somebody in an ad, for example. Um, and also video is cheaper to get engagement. So depending on what type of goal you have with an ad or ad specifically, getting someone to view a video is much cheaper than getting them to click to your website. So I would say, depending on how you're wanting, to, what you're trying to achieve um, would dictate maybe which one would work better too. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> cool. And Hannah, um, Laura also had a question on um, what is yeah. a good, easy to use video editing app or software Ooh. and what cameras are you using to take video? Great question. So from a camera's perspective, um, if you have an iPhone or an Android that's decent, like, I don't know, newness, you often can take really good video content on the, your phones. And especially if you're using that video content on social media, um, people expect that type of experience. So I'd say using your camera on your phone is perfect. We use um, two platforms primarily that I think both have free options. One is Canva, who, which we use it for a lot of creative creation, but they also have, um, started rolling out video options on Canva. And then Wave. Wave is like a specific video um, platform that we use as well that I believe has free options. And what's great about Wave is that you can upload a video and then you can resize that video to Square, to Instagram Story, et cetera, within the app. Um, automatically, which I think is a really good option. That's a really great question. Elle, I don't know if you have the links to either of those. Maybe you could send through with Canva and, and yeah. Wave. Cool. Awesome. That's a great question. Okay. So um, next, I'm going to switch over to some of the copy stuff. Um, so this is actual copy that we've used for one of our clients. Um, and I was just taking out their name and their phone number so you don't call them for fun. And just kind of tying into um, how we structure our copy. Now this is specific to a Facebook ad, but you can pull some of this messaging and you can use it in your organic content. Um, you can use it for maybe flyers, anything, just kind of this process. So um, in a Facebook ad, there's a couple areas that you can put text. Um, before somebody reads a the text, they'll often engage first by looking at the image or the video. And from there, they'll decide if they wanna look next at the messaging that surrounds it. Different people will say people start in different places um, as far as where they start their reading. Some people start their reading at the top with the text. Some people start their reading at the headline. So what I would recommend is with both of those placements, you wanna make sure that the, the messaging in that first um, sentence is really clear to who you're speaking to and entices them enough to um, go on to the next stage in the text, read on. So text-wise, and this kind of goes back to that, the why and how we've summarized it into one statement. Here we've written your kids. So we're speaking directly to a parent or guardian. So they know they're speaking about their kids. Um, we'll love making new friends, learning lifelong skills and having lots of fun during our gymnastics and tumbling classes at gym name. So we've outlined um, what their kids should expect, making new friends, learning lifelong skills and having fun. Um, and we talk about how they're gonna do that. Gymnastics and tumbling, maybe it's gymnastics and cheer, maybe it's preschool and after school programs, maybe whatever those programs are that you're offering them. And then we outline who you are. Um, just this kind of goes back to the brand tying in. We then move on to make it really clear um, how they can contact us and what they're contacting us about. So we give, um, we try to give two options in all the ads we write. We have a destination from the link, usually sending them to a website or a landing page or lead form. But then what we started doing rec recently is adding in the phone number to the messaging. Because we also recognize that some parents don't wanna dabble around on websites and landing pages. They just wanna pick up the phone and give you a call. Um, and then for some of our gyms, we have specific offers. So signing up for a trial class, coming in for a tour, um, learning more about our 30-day risk-free program, whatever that is, tying that into the messaging as well. And then we always try to overemphasize um, 
the things that make you unique um, and or some of those added benefits that might get people over the line. So with this gym specifically, we're talking about how you can get started with a free trial. This really emphasizes that there's really no risk to getting involved with this gym. If you don't love it, you don't have to commit anything. Um, they specifically are in a military-based community, so they offer a military discount. So we've highlighted that here. Um, we talk highlight again who it's for. So boys and girls of all ages. So if I have a son or daughter, um, this is relevant to them. And then I also emphasize that trust piece, high professional and caring coaches. So this is something we kind of try to add in wherever possible um, for parents is that trust badge, essentially, whether you are certified coaches, um, whether you're number one rated in your community, just kind of that trust badge with the copy that we write. The headline, we just try to make it as super clear who we are and what we're offering. So try a gymnastics or tumbling class today. Maybe it's sign up for a free trial. Maybe it's preschool, ninja, dance, and more. So like drawing the attention of the parent and the program that you're offering. And then a button. So in this case, we use the button sign up. Um, if you have been an ads manager, you may know this. If you haven't, you are limited to the types of buttons you can use. You can't customize that button. But what we found has worked the best um, over the testing we've done is sign up and learn more. Um, seem to be the best performing buttons, no matter what kind of ads we're running. Um, unless we're running a call now ad, then we'll use call now as an option too. Um, so if you want to like take this exact copy and use it yourself, that's great. Um, what we, in, the, in a little bit later, we're gonna go through a USP process, which can help you kind of identify maybe what are the couple things that make your gym different or what you're hoping kids will achieve by being a part of your gym. Um, maybe you want kids to, uh, I mean, I think every kid wants to have fun, but making new friends, having fun, learning lifelong skills, getting active, um, learning something new, you know, whatever those things are that you want your, those kids to achieve and adding that into your copy and then figuring out what are the things about you that are different that can help create credibility for your business. Um, this ad specifically was written for people who maybe don't know about the gym. They've never heard of it before. They've never seen you before. It's very designed to in, in, engage with um, a mom or dad or a parent who um, has never heard of you and just kind of taking the lens of what would they need to know to take the next action. Uh, Andy, I don't know if there's anything you'd want to add about copy with this. No. Okay. All I right. think you covered it. Cool. All right. Okay. So prior to writing copy or picking pictures or anything for the clients we work with, um, we try to identify things that make them different or things that um, make you stand out within your community. And I think oftentimes it's not about just standing out against um, other gymnastics gyms or tumbling centers. It's about how do you stand up and compare against the soccer club or the football club or the arts and crafts or the music because all those options are available to your parents. And it's about making sure your option is the best for their child um, against all those different things they have access to. Um, and these are just a couple questions that we um, go through with some of our clients' exercises. And we advise anyone that takes this course to kind of write them down and ask yourself and dig deep into answering these questions because a lot of these answers can help frame the messaging on your website, on your landing pages, on your social media, et cetera. Um, first one is what is the outcome that your ideal customer truly wants? With this question, there's two different customers I would say you're speaking to. Is it the mom and the dad or the parent or guardian? What do they want? And then also the customer of the actual child, what do they want? Um, and figuring out where those things align and are different. A mom might really want their kid to have structure and be more disciplined, but, but the kid might just wanna have fun and learn something new and be around friends. So really identifying what matters to each of those people. And that can help you craft messaging in your social media mess, uh, flyers, et cetera. And then answering the question is how you create that outcome. So if the goal is to, that parents really want, uh, or kids really wanna have fun and make new friends, how do your classes promote that? How do your offerings promote that? 
um, what actions do you take that create that experience for your customer? Um, and that becomes a really good, if your kid wants to make new friends, sign them up for this class because we do blah, 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 for example. Um, asking the question, what factors would motivate them to sign up for your program? What gets them excited to take action in your program versus others? Um, this is something where you can kind of ask yourself, like, what, what am I offering new parents? Could we maybe do a free trial? Um, maybe we could do a, um, I don't know, buy a month, get second month half off. I don't know, but thinking creatively about what are those little offers you could throw in to help get them over the edge after we've delighted them with the why. And then this also ties into why should they choose you over others? And I wouldn't say this is about knocking all the other options in their community, but what about what you do makes it the best option for the things that they desire? Um, and really speaking to that emotional piece. And I would say if you really struggle with taking um, the answers to these questions and translating it into really compelling messaging, um, maybe looking at, once you've answered all these questions, you can engage with a copywriter. You can use like a copywriter service or something and say, hey, I'm, I'm working on our website. This is what I wanted to convey. Can you help me write out this page based on this? And they might be able to help you. Or you have somebody in your staff that's really good at transferring that information. But I would say going through this process and asking yourself these questions um, can be really beneficial to helping you craft your messaging across the board and being a good reference point to are we speaking about who we are and what matters to us. Um, Andy, I don't know if you have anything about that messaging, these questions, any questions you'd add to that? Nope. <laughs> You're muted, by the way. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's like keeping it simple and about them and what motivates them should be yeah. what your messaging is, should be what your brand is if you want to get customers. Um, I mean, oftentimes as business, business owners, we get a little bit caught up in ourselves and what we want. Um, the reality is if we want pay, people to pay us money to do yeah. what we want, we need to give them what they want. So, yeah. you know, crafting your message and crafting the way your brand interacts with your target audience needs to be about them and what drives them um and like i said before if your what drives you is very similar or if not the same as what drives them then you have a, a you know magic um and a match made in heaven so keeping it simple and keeping it very direct to their motivation is is really important and just going back on that if you're a parent yourself you might be able to like think of critically about what you as a parent want for your kids, but something else we've seen people do is they'll actually ask their current members, like, what about our program do you love the most? Like, why does your child, why did you sign your child up? Like, what do you want your child to achieve through this program? And they can start giving you like actual feedback on the why. And you'll have those one-off parents that are like, oh, I want my kid to be the next Simone Biles, but most of them will be looking at, well, I just really wanted a safe place for my kid to learn and grow and um, find something they're passionate about. Oh, okay, great. That's great messaging that you could incorporate into and engage and get more parents like that into your community. Okay, so the next thing is um, what we call a unique selling proposition. And this is actually a really good exercise that builds off of those questions that we just answered to help you get a better understanding about um, who you are, who you serve, what matters to your community um, to help craft messaging. So um, you can write this down, but basically you can put in a line who you serve. So your programs are for kids. And this, I made an example. This is my gym. My programs serve kids ages two to 18. You might be something different. Maybe you're just girls. Maybe you're just boys. I don't know, putting that in. Um, who are they? Who are the people we serve? We love kids who uh, love being active and making new friends. So um, that might be similar for yours, but figuring out like what type of kids thrive and enjoy your experiences. Um, Hannah's gym is what are we dedicated to do? So my gym is dedicated to providing safe spaces. Um, maybe your gym is dedicated to um, helping kids fall in love with gymnastics, um, helping kids reach their potential. I don't know, whatever that is for your gym. Where, 
um, your kids can get moving in and fun and engaging activities. So these are two things that um, we're looking to help kids achieve. We're helping them to get moving it through fun, engaging activities. Maybe it's you love um, kids to get active through gymnastics and tumbling, blah, blah, blah. Um, sorry. And then you emphasize which programs that's through. So uh, our classes, maybe it's preschool, ninja, and dance. And then I've added on at the end, led by our certified coaches. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe there's a different way you can phrase that for your own gym. Um, so this is an exercise where you can just go for blank, who blank, your name, and then where and through. And it just kind of helps take some of that content that you've just gone through the process of brainstorming and putting it into a constructive statement. Um, this is really good too, if you, if, you're, if you struggle with kind of writing or messaging, it can be a nice exercise to kind of like simply put that content together. Um, I don't know, Andy, if, this, if there's anything you wanna add on this one, but I've just found this is a really great simple exercise that helps get you thinking about who you are, who you serve, and how, um, and then you can always build upon this, but it's a great starting exercise to kind of come up with that unique selling proposition or, or what about you um, matters to parents. Yeah, I think, I think what this is for you guys is don't let um, perfection stop you from making, of doing something, right? It's like, um, you know, implementing action is much more important than waiting to perfect something um right now there is lots of opportunity out there and we'll talk a lot about this tomorrow um you know and you can play around and and, and do all these all you know think about your branding and try to perfect it um what hannah's given you here is that first step to actually get something out there to get into the marketplace and actually start making a a, a difference because there is opportunity right now believe it or not um so, you know, using these tools, um, use them to start crafting how you want to speak to your, your audience. And then over time, go back and refine and do better and, and upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. But this will give you a, a good like base from where to go to, which you can upgrade from. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has any questions on the questions or the structure, but um, and there's, there's a lot of information out there about USP, unique selling propositions, exercises that you can do, but just giving you, and we could go down a whole rabbit hole about how to dig into this more, but just giving you a good starting place to build from. And then you can always keep digging in and, and learning more about this. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. If not, I'll just kind of keep marching on. So um, the last main thing I wanted to kind of go through was a few things you can do today and things that you should be thinking about that can also help um, set your foundation up for success and really help make sure that you're in a good place to um, maximize the people that you're engaging with, whether you're current members or hopefully future members. So one thing we talk about is whether or not you're running advertisement currently through Facebook as we recommend installing a Facebook pixel on your website. Um, if you don't know what this is, there's a lot of information out there about how to install this. I think we have it in a tutorial in our academy, Andy, on how to get your Facebook pixel installed. And this basically is a tracking um, experience from Facebook and um, your website. So this is a really great tool. To, well, it's an essential tool if you're running ads, but it's also a really great tool if you're not running ads to just um, understand who your community is um, so that when you are running ads that you can maximize that. Um, I don't wanna go to too much detail on the pixel because you can go down a whole rabbit hole, but essentially if you are running ads and you don't have it, you need to make sure you get it installed ASAP because you essentially can't track and optimize anything that happens on your website. I've added in something here that's very new, relatively new that's a lot of information's come out about and that's the iOS 14 update. If you don't know what I'm talking about, essentially Apple is unrolling a new requirement essentially, and it doesn't just impact Facebook, it impacts all um, third party vendors, I guess you would say, to where people can choose to opt out of being tracked um, through Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat, whatever. This is really um, something that we're 
closely monitoring, but it will impact your tracking and it will impact your optimization. Um, I'm going to send through a link just now that um, whether or not you're running ads through Facebook um, or if you're running ads through any channel, um, Facebook specifically, you're going to want to register your no domain and get your domain verified. Um, this is one of the things that we're doing for our clients right now that's really important with making sure that you're as um, compliant or set up as possible. So that when this iOS, iOS 14 update rolls out, that you're in a better position to um, be successful. Um, the thing that's not that scary about it is that it's happening to everybody. So it's gonna impact everyone. However, there are certain things you can do to be in a better position. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, I would suggest looking up iOS 14 to just start to see what's happening. Um, but essentially it will impact tracking and optimization for Facebook and any other channel that you're um, managing. So um, I don't think we have anything in the academy yet about the iOS 14 stuff, but we might be adding things in there. We're going to probably do some more information, send some more information to our clients as well. If you have questions about it, um, I would say I'm in the Facebook gymnastics marketing group. You can ask questions in there. Um, I'll probably be doing a post this week about it a little bit as well. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard anything about it or have questions about that specifically, but I know that's something that's very current that's happening right now with Facebook and across the board. So I just wanted to make sure that we had time to chat about that and that you got the process for the domain. Andy, I don't know if you want to share anything about that. You're, you yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you probably haven't heard much about it. The reality is I'm not sure what kind of effect that will actually have on you. So I wouldn't, as gym owners, I wouldn't let it worry you too much. Um, yeah. You're doing local advertising. You're doing, you know, it's it's a pretty, I think it'll be a, it's not going to, a lot of the data that Facebook has, they already have on many of the users. So, um, you, It's going to be what a user does going forward, which will affect them. For you guys, what we really want to know is who is, the moms in your community. And I'm not sure, I, I don't think that that's gonna have much of effect on on you yeah. guys and probably nothing for you guys to worry too much about. If it does become something that we all should be worried about, we'll probably talk to you guys about it. So, um, cause obviously we're, we're in the meeting. I think with it, it, yeah. And I would say, what I would say is I agree. Um, just assuming that you take the necessary steps to be as up to speed as possible. So like one of those things is the only thing you may have to do is register your domain and then you're fine from a gym owner's perspective. Right. Right. I agree. I think it'll impact our e-commerce and, and bigger um, audience like, clients a little bit more than it will. Yeah. Making sure business. that your website is a secure yeah. domain, not like op not unsecure is really important. So when you yeah. look at it and it says HTTP, make sure it says HTTPS. Um, and get that secured. If you need some help on it, reach out to us in the in the face in the Facebook group. We'll be happy to help you walk through that. Um, you know that secured domain. Funnily enough, many gyms don't have that, and it does affect Google and Facebook. Facebook yep. marks you down. Google marks you down. Um, making sure that is is clean. Making sure that your website is responsive. Right as we've got here, make, meaning. If I'm on my cell phone, I can read it easily. If I'm on my um, you know, desktop, I can read it easy. Remember, most people are using their phones now um, when they're online. Um, so it means we, the, the website has got to you know, focus on being easy to use on a, on a mobile phone. And remember, most people on their mobile phones, when they're searching for you, are looking for either a map of how to get to you, a phone number of how to call you, um, or an email address of how to email you. Right. So making that really easy to find and clickable. So they just need to click it and then it will open up in their in their map app on their phone. Or if they click on the phone number that it you know that it just starts calling, making it as easy to use on, on the phone is is really, really important. So um and and just making it less friction between what the client wants, which is the mom typically. And what you want, which is signing them up, making sure it's as easy as possible, taking out any reasons why they might not want to do it, um, will will make an impact, right? And then if you put a little bit of advertising dollars behind it, using Facebook, it could make a significant impact. Yeah. 
And I would just say for a long time, small business owners have been able to kind of push digital to the side as kind of like in the back burner of how they grow and scale their businesses. But now I think as a whole industry, we've really had to refocus and reevaluate how people are engaging with us. And in a lot of places, the only way people can or have been able to find you is through digital tools. And we're as, right. a, as a society this past year, last year, we've trained everyone to lean so much more heavily on the internet and social media and digital experiences. So if you've been putting, getting your website up to speed, if you've been putting in your social media up to speed on the back burner, I would highly recommend making that a priority at the beginning of this year, because whether or not you like it, people are going to be looking and trying to find you through that tool now more than ever. And that's only going to increase um, as time goes on. Yeah. As younger generations become more buying power, become parents, that's the norm. And so doing like an audit, looking at ways people contact you, is it easy for them? Like Andy says, is your website mobile responsive? Um, and coming up with that list of how to get you, how to reduce friction in that experience um, for your business. And one more thing I would um, add here, and this is kind of from during the COVID period, and I think it's less and less um, as a parent, maybe in California still for you, Lori, but from other use, some other of you, like uh, it's not as important as the policy pages and how you're compliant with state and local guidelines. It depends on where you are, I would say how important that is and um, where that should be on your website. But I would say having that information available um, and maybe even just spending the time to look at um, from a policy perspective, your gym as a whole and making sure that it's easy for parents to find that information if they need to find that information. Yeah. And um, just to, and to end up here, you know, um, Hannah was talking about, you know, once upon a time as small business owners and gyms and so forth, we could ignore our online part. That's why a lot of times online, our, you know, our, in the gym, gymnastics and cheerleading industries, the, the websites are not the best, uh, maybe more so gymnastics than anything else. Um, but now <clears throat> more so than ever in our history, have you had, you, you've never had as many um, tools that can make a significant dif difference to your business for quite a reasonable cost. Um, you now have the power to do things that large multi-billion dollar corporations do, right? Now, small business like yourself can actually compete with mm -hmm. large institutions because of the power of the platforms and what's on there. Now, we can all argue about Facebook and you know what good they put into the world and Google and big tech and all of that. But the reality is these platforms have given us the way, a, a way to connect with our audiences in a way that as small business owners, we've never had, ever had. Right. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So please make sure um, you're, you're in tomorrow at the same time. I wanted to just uh, finish with this as well. If you're not part of the gymnastics marketing group, please join the gymnastics marketing group. There's lots of tips and advice and help there. If you ever are trying to do anything, you can ask a question in there and Ella manages the group and she, and all of the team is on there to answer and help. Um, so make sure you use that as a, as a, as a group to, 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 you know, be supported. It's not, we don't do any marketing of our services. We don't allow any other business to market their services in that group. Um, it's there to help you guys. So please join it if you're not already there. Um, it says sign up with a don donation to the Gymnastics Marketing Academy. We actually don't ask that. We actually have a thing called pay what you can if you want to. And if you can't pay anything, pay zero. You can actually pay zero if what you can pay is zero. What's more important is that you sign up to the Academy and actually you have, I think there's 90 to 100 different lessons in there of how to do these things. So as we're going through these next four days of, of or three days of, of teaching you stuff, in there is the nuts and bolts of how to put a pixel on your site, how to you know, write really good copy, how to you know, use um, Facebook ad manager to build your ads, all of the things, all of the nitty gritties are actually in that marketing academy. So if you're not in the marketing academy, join. If you don't have any money because things are tight, please don't pay us. Just just join, right? 
Um, and well, I think it does ask you, Kajabi is, is the platform that we use. I think they ask for your, uh, for a credit card, but you can put zero as the dollar amount that you want to, to pay. Um, and that's fine. Just make sure you, you, you get in so you can start using it. Um, and then if you want to work with us at the end of the, uh, of the three days, I'll, I'll tell you about it, but we actually have a special for you guys too. If you want us to actually do the work, if it's like, man, this is really good. I really like it, but I just don't want to do it myself. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help you get going. We actually have a, an opportunity for you to get in, um, and work with us like the other 50 odd gyms that are already working with us. So regardless of whether you work with us or not, we want you to take action and um, actually make a difference. Because right now, more than anything, more than any time, we, we can't just sit there and let things affect us. We've got to take charge and, and not get blown around by the winds of change, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, um, unless, Hannah, you have anything else to add, um, we will I was will just be... going to say, if anybody yep. has any follow if anybody has any questions i can stay on for a few minutes after you kind of wrap things up if people have questions yep and if you um yeah so see you tomorrow um before you have any questions for hannah but see you tomorrow at the same time tomorrow we'll talk about mindset and the opportunity and all the things that we're seeing from from a market uh an industry standpoint so the opportunity that you have um to, to actually get your voice out there at a very effective in a very effective cheap way right um, i don't like using the word cheap but cost effective maybe is a better word um, but you can do it very powerfully right now i would just say now the holidays are over it's yeah. super cheap it's on facebook like cp cost for impressions is like down by yeah. a bazillion amount so right right now i would say through to april may june um is like perfect time for you guys to get the word out yeah all right any questions? If you have any questions, you can hang on. If not, it was nice we'll see to see you tomorrow. Me. See you tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Nicholas. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> uh, Hannah, if you were staying on for a couple of minutes, I do have a, a quick yeah. question. Um, we were, when we were talking about uh, the Facebook marketing uh, yeah. early, uh, so we're a small club. Um, but that's something that we, we get a lot of traffic out of. Um, over the last uh, a couple of weeks since Christmas, I've spent uh, a couple hundred dollars on Facebook and we've gotten uh, about 25 messages, a lot of impressions um, and stuff like that. Uh, so my question is, is relative to what other clubs are doing, what do you see as a, a normal amount um, to be spending on that? Uh, yeah. What's your um, audience size in your community that you're... Uh, so within 30 miles is a million people. Okay. So you have a decent audience size of people and that's, and that's specific to parents or is that just the full population? That's the full population. Okay. Um, so even within that, there's probably a couple hundred thousand parents, I'm guessing that are in that yeah. group. Okay. So tip the whole audience and sometimes to a narrow audience. Yeah. Um, but is it under a month normal? Is that low? Is that? Yeah. So, um, it depends, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. So in, in general, for that type of audience, we typically spend or recommend spending around $25 a day, but we range depending on what we're trying to do for clients. Like if you're just running one campaign, you might be able to get away with a smaller budget. We typically run, um, I think three to five campaigns. So we'll run like a like a traffic campaign, a messenger campaign, lead gen, like kind of all at the same time, just to speak to people different ways. Mm -hmm. And um, with smaller audiences, like smaller communities where their audience is smaller, we might run like a 10 to $15 a day budget. Budget wise, it really depends on how many people you wanna reach and how, what period of time. So the, the less you spend, the less people you'll reach every day. So if you're like, if you're running a promotion um, for January and you want to reach everybody, you might spend a lot more during that time just so that you can get it in front of everybody. But if it's like an ongoing thing where you're like, you know what, we just want like 10 people to contact us a month. Maybe we'll run like $10 a day. And we know that kind of gets us around 10 people a month and that's, we're happy with that. But if you want to reach more people and get more outcomes, um, 
like you say you're getting a few messages. How much is it costing you per message you're saying right now? Do you know? Uh, I don't actually have that number right now. Okay. Uh, but that question, what do you think is uh, the right, you know, customer cost. acquisition cost for that, those, those messages? Yeah. So um, it depends on uh, if you're, are you doing like messenger campaigns where people are sending yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Both. Uh, some are messenger, some are, you know, sign up or, or learn, click to learn more. And going to your that. website and like page on the website okay um so we have different kind of costs per type of campaign and it obviously varies depending on where you are um typically we see anywhere from two to five dollar messenger costs all the way up to like 10 to 15 i would say is like the range so if you're in that range i would say you're probably in a really healthy range if you're lower than that then you're just crushing it if you're higher than that then there might be things you can change to get a better result um uh, if you're, if you're really savvy with like the different metrics, um, you can look at things like um, click-through rates. So if your click-through rate's really low, then maybe your ad's not resonating as much. Maybe your click-through rate's pretty good, but your um, cost on your landing page is really high. Maybe it's really hard for people to find the form, maybe like looking at your website, how that's working. Um, those are some different changes you can make. Mess that's kind of messenger lead like if you're doing a lead form or a landing page usually we're see it really depends but i would say seven dollars to 25 dollars is kind of the range and it really depends on where you are with like lead conversion uh, we kind of have internal targets that are around like 10 to 15 dollars is kind of okay um, healthy are you guys kind of around that amount right now yeah, I, I believe it's uh, just under ten dollars right now per message. Uh, is from since Christmas. That's great. So I, what I would say is, if you're getting those targets and you're really happy with them, in theory, all you would have to do is spend more money, and then you would just get more messages at that cost instead of getting. Um, and so, uh, I with um, small business though, I don't think we ever spend more than like fifty dollars a day, usually because just because the audiences get um fatigued and you don't if you're not regularly refreshing yeah. your content then people get tired of seeing you all the time so it's kind of like that fine balance of like you want a mom to see you like maybe a couple times a month and then they see a new ad a couple times a month and so it's right yeah but it sounds like you guys are doing some good stuff though getting decent costs and it's just kind of building on that now yeah we're, we're trying we're part of all those you know all these groups on facebook we're part of y'all's yeah. on facebook i see you all the time you know, following and learning from what's getting posted. So okay. we appreciate that. It's great, great cool. guidance. Awesome. Well, if you awesome. have questions, like uh, Andy said, you can comment in the group and then, or like check out the Academy too. There's some little things in there that might give you some um, ideas. It sounds like you're pretty savvy in there already and it's just kind of building on there. Cool. Well, thank you. Jen, yeah. did you have just curious uh, what they may think when they go if they're going to go look at our websites. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, feel free. What's your website? <laughs> uh, CarolinaTrampoline.com. Carolina Trampoline. <laughs> oh, I appreciate your time today, guys. We, you know, appreciate uh, that PowerPoint going through. It's great yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, it's good. And it only gets better. <laughs> just wait until <laughs> Russell comes on. He'll just blow your mind over a bunch of stuff. Yeah. That's a great video. Oh, thanks. That landing one. So one thing I do see is it doesn't look like you have a pixel on your website. Is that correct? Yeah. Thing that I wrote down to, yeah. to look at. You. So that's something a, to, sorry, go ahead. I, I run the website on Wix. So I, I pulled up Wix and that's one of my next things when we're done on the call to look into. Cool. Yeah. I would highly recommend that, especially if you're running ads, it's just, it gives you way more clarity on the tracking and optimization too, for sure. Cool. The nice. pixel will tell you the, 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 the demographic that it'll tell you who the customer is that's looking at your website too from the Facebook poll. Oh. Yeah. So if you're an ads manager, um, cause are you running boosted ads or more ads like in ads manager ads? Um, both. Both. Okay. So if yeah, you go to, if, yeah, if you go to ads manager, what you'll see is if you don't have a pixel on your site and you're sending people mm -hmm. to your website, anything after like a link click will just look like empty because once people leave your ad, Facebook's not tracking them anymore. Mm -hmm. 
And so like, if you're optimized now with your messenger campaigns, you're fine because people are staying in Facebook. Like they're just sending you yeah. messages But with your website ones. Let, let's say you're running a campaign that's optimized for landing page views. Well, right now it's not tracking landing page views, so it can't actually optimize for that. Right. So once you get that pay Facebook pixel installed, it allows you to one track people when they go to their website, but also get a little bit more dynamic with how you're optimizing your website type campaigns um, and track if you have like um, tracking on your forms like you can actually track the number of people that complete a form on your website that came from your ads versus kind of like guessing like well we think these 10 people probably came from the ad because we're not doing anything else but right. we don't know for sure kind of thing too yeah all right guys i'm gonna have to end this yes. now because i've got another <laughs> meeting coming in there's, there's someone in my oh. waiting room but we'll see you tomorrow yeah. nicholas and we'll nice meeting you guys good luck yeah.